It's Wednesday, it's the 30th Chalamay Tzukas. And we're learning the next Maim. Besukas Teshu Shivas Yomim, Kol Ezech Vesol Yeshu Basukas, from 50 years ago, Tav Shishin Lama Dalet. The Rebbe said this Maim on the second day Yom Tif. That Yom Kippur was Shabbos. That means that Tzukas was on Thursday. If I'm not mistaken, this was the Fabrengen, where the Rebbe showed displeasure from the Chesidim sadness or... Uh, earnestness considering the fact that there was a war going on and Yidin were dying and the Rebbe's attitude was we're going to fix it with Simcha I'm, I'm going to read you one paragraph it, it says Leil Bel the Chag Sukkis, which means Sukkis was Wednesday night to Thursday this was probably Thursday night not Friday night but Leil Bel is the Chag Sukkis. I'm going to read one paragraph of Achein Yesh Lidresh V'Litveya we should expect and demand from the old Hasidim that were in Labavitch, in Otvotsk, in Poltava, and so forth. They should bring with the young Hasidim and they should tell them what they saw and they heard there. And if you know an Aleph, you should teach an Aleph. And if you know a Beis, you should teach a Beis. And the Rebbe says there are places that they have Mashpiyim. And those Mashpiyim, when they come here, all of a sudden they become very humble. And this is the Shin mit the Drei Kepelach, Shiflet Shel Sheket. This is the full Stanivis. They should Fabrengen. There should be a Fabrengen. Tonight, tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, Shabbos morning, and Motzah Shabbos, and Sunday, and Monday, till Shmini Yatzah Asim Chastel and Shabbos Bereshis. And it should be in the kind of way, like it says in the Pasuk, which is connected to the prophecy of the redemption, when there's going to be the time of everybody's going to know the Abish to themselves, Kulam Yedu Eisi, like we had in the previous Maimir. That is not going to be anymore the English of Rav Talmud. Because we're going to have our own day. Mala Ares Fabring and Zesavaya Kamayim Layam Chasm. Loshen Hapostik Mala Ares Deas Adishem. And the Rebbe said, Mala Ares Fabring and Zesavaya Kamayim Layam So if you look in the Teres Menachem, the whole Fabring is one numbered. Page 94 and 95. And it, I'm sure that the Yiddish is the same. We don't have the Sikhs, the Maimir we have, the Sukhs, which we're going to learn now. The uh, Sikhs we don't have. And then the Kud of the Sikhs was that the Rebbe was very disappointed that there was a lack of Simcha and that the justification for the lack of Simcha was the war. And the Rebbe said, Excuse me, this is not how you solve problems. You solve the problems with Simcha itself. Like the Rebbe said, Like I spoke on Yud Gimel Tishrei. So this is the fourth Maimir from Tafshan Lamed Aleph from the 1973 74 year. And it's the second of what is going to be six or seven my morning. That the Rebbe said in the days, literally the days that the war was going on, the Yom Kippur war was going on. Now, in the last Maimir, we spoke about the Dalat Minim. And the Dalat Minim was doing Avas But then we juxtaposed from Avas Yisrael to Avas Hashem. And the Rebbe brought that there's two levels of Avas Hashem. There's Avas Hashem only from the Neshoma and Avas Hashem from the Nevesha Bahamis, which is considered infinite. So much so that it cannot be commanded. It can only be a promise, not a tzivui. And the Rebbe went from that, that when you love Hashem with your animal soul, it's more than when you love Hashem with your divine soul, to the physical performance of mitzvahs. That in physical mitzvahs, you have Atz Muslim Hussein, so Baruch Hu. And when you do a physical mitzvah, you release higher energies from Olam HaToyhu, which come into this world, not in a way that's defined by the world but defined by itself and it affects the whole world including the idea of Halua of the Shem Kol Goyim Shabchu Kol Umim, which begins not on Sukkot but right after Yemek Yippurim as we discussed now Rabbi said this Chalamayid I gave two classes I started out of Yom Tif, but it's been very hectic Baruch Hashem I taught the Maimir Now I want to start teaching my Besukah stage this is a long Maimir it's seven pages but it's rather elaborate and I guess this Maimer continues the theme of the previous Maimer. That when you do physical mitzvahs, you release very high oiris. The difference is only that in the previous Maimer, the high oiris that you reveal are oiris from El which are Kodom Latikon. In this Maimer, you're revealing Atz Muslim Hussein Sav Baruch Hu, because Gashmir was created from Atz Muslim, he brings at the end of this Maimer from the Mittal Rebbe, Shayesh Hanivra Gashmi, who. Yesh Hoamiti, it is the Yesh Hoamiti. So in that respect, the theme 
continues. And the way I understand it in the scheme of the war, this is the of Miftsoyim. Go out into the street, you take an esrig, you shake it with a yid, bring yid into a lulav, you do a mitzvah. Every mitzvah has asmus of hus inside of itself, it reveals unbelievable koiches and it contributes to the haluas of the Shem kol goyim shabchu kol lomi gavar leinu chastei and as a result it helps yid mechlal and in the mechome especially. This maimer continues that theme, as will the maimer after this one, and the maimer after this one is very unusual. So it's a maimer chsidus, which is almost like a shtikel and nigleh, where the Rebbe is going to show that the chefzah shal kedusha of tzitzis, of sukkah, is greater than the chefzah of kedusha, chefzah of mitzvah, of tefillin, and of mezuzah, and of tzitzis. And then of course he says, well, it's not just true of the sukkah, it's true also of the lulav. I'm not sure why and how, but that's what he's going to say. But here he adds one more very important component. And that's the idea of Simcha. In other words, the Rebbe is going to argue that in order for us to be able to reveal Atzmus, when we do physical mitzvahs, you have to have Simcha. Either the Simcha reveals the Atzmus, or the Atzmus which is revealed in order for it to be revealed needs to have Simcha. I mean, these are my own words. This is my talking into the Maimit. But this Maimir, for the most part, is going to talk about the idea when you do a physical mitzvah, you release incredibly high Madrigus Nelakus from the highest of levels, what we call in our culture not just Elam Ateo, not from Sev of Kalam, but Atmos Mamish. And when you do it with Simcha, this Atmos, you have a Koyach to reveal this Atmos, and then now I'm adding my own words, and the Atmos itself is revealed. So I'm going to be teaching this in two classes. And um, for it's been a while since I've done this last but we're going to actually not go in order we're going to learn the mime within the mime we're going to start on page 20 we're going to learn 20 and 21 and 22 and most of 23 and then we're going to the next class we're going to go back and learn uh, 18 and 19 the beginning of 20 and then the bottom of 23 and 24. the longer class is this one it's very nice because the shtikel haskola here the rebbe gita gita len an in chsidis rebbe kvento sa'in from in chsidis the discussion is going to be, first of all, how shame and oyer are the same thing, and then what's the difference between shame and oyer. On the superficial level, oyer has a mile over shame, and on a deeper level, shame has a mile over oyer. And when you do on a mitzvah, you're calling the Ebishter's name, you saw Makache Shmecha, the shame, Yechel Kuchabicho Shchinte, Laskaz, and the Shmeh, and the Shmeh, and so forth and so on. So again, to repeat, this is the middle of the Yom Kippur War, and this moment is mostly about the end of mitzvahs, and again, I'm going to interpret and assume that the Rebbe was saying this in the spirit of the idea of Miftsoyim. When you meet a Yid, especially a, shol, a soldier, you do a mitzvah with him, it's a shmir of him, it's a shmir of all the people that he is shomer, because it releases very, very high Medegas Nelakus that affect, like the Rebbe said in the previous Maimir, Halu as Hashem kol goyim, shabchu kol um, yovar aleinu chastei. But in order to have the koyach to do it, you have to have simcha. So, I'm not going to waste your time or mine. We're going to go to page 20 and we're going to begin to read the first full paragraph where it says, Again, the Rebbe visits a Maimon from the Rebbe Marash, a different Maimon from the Rebbe Marash. It's at the end of Maimon Tafre Shlamet Besefe, or Bakama Makemis in other places. I'm assuming other places means in the Rebbe Marash himself, but I don't know. Um, but it says in Sidiv, Yismicho Bacha, Kol Yisom Makadesh Eshemech. And the Jewish people are going to rejoice in you because they are Makadesh Eshemech, they're Makadesh Eishemech's name. On Shabbos, in the Elokeinu Vlekav, we say in right before the end of the Baruch of Kiddush of Shabbos, we say, V'yanuchuva, Kol Yisom Makadesh Eshemech. All the Jewish people should rest on Shabbos, Makadesh Eshemech, that they bring a Kiddush to the Eishemech's name. But on Yom Tif, in Vahasienu, and this is in all the tefillahs of Yom Tov, including Musaf, we say, V'yismuchu v'chal ko'yisho m'kadosh eshemecha. Not V'yanuchu v'chal ko'yisho m'kadosh eshemecha, that the Jewish people are going to rest in it because of Shabbos is connected to Oinik, which is the Yenam Menucha. Yom Tov is connected to Simcha, so it changes from V'yanuchu v'chal to V'yismuchu v'chal. But there's a difference. What's the difference between saying Shabbos V'yanuchu v'chal and saying Yom Tov V'yismuchu v'chal? So superficially, the difference is whether the Avoid is Oinik, Shabbos, or Yom, Simcha, Yom Tov. But on Shabbos, you say, V'yinu Chavah, a Yid rests in Shabbos. On Yom Tov, you say, V'yismei Chavah, a Jew rejoices in Hashem. Yismei Chavah, a Yid for Eitzach, mit Nebishna, in a Nebishna, a Jew rejoices in the Nebishna. And that's what this Maimed is talking to. What does this mean? 
that on Yom Tov we say, V'yismichu v'chal kol yisom ha-kadosh ha-shemech. So then you move and the question is, Ha-reshimcha hu-shmei shal ha-kadosh baruch ha-shmecha means Hashem's name. And you have to assume that the Eibishter's name is pretty holy, because the Eibishter is all about holiness. And therefore the question is, Ma-hu pirush ma-kadosh ha-shemecha, what does it mean to make Hashem's name holy? As if you were to say, Shetzarach ha-kadosh ha-shem, Hashem means to be halified. Isn't it true that the Eibishter's name is Kaddish? Even if there's a notion that Hashem's name needs to be halified, why and how is it that the Jewish people are Makadish Mesha Lakadish Baruch? Let's be direct. Makadish means Yidn Go Amsiris Nefesh Akidish Hashem. I mean, we dive in every Shabbos, never Yamta. We say, Vinu Chova Koyu Sam Makadish Hashemacha, Vinu Chova Koyu Sam Makadish Hashemacha, and I always think of the name Kiddish Hashem. Kiddish Hashem is not a fun topic. It's not an easy thing to think about. It's not an easy thing to talk about. But it's a very real and a serious part of our identity as Yidin. It's very much a part of what Jewish people are. The Yidin of Kiddush, the Yidin of Kiddush Hashem, the Hashem, the Indian of Kiddush Hashem, and so on. So Yidin of Kiddush Hashem is a big deal. Now you should know that in the Zayar, in Pashas Emir, where he talks about the Zayar says it means to say Kiddush, Kaddish, Kaddish, Kaddish is considered is the equivalent of Mesiris Nefesh or Kiddush Hashem and of course the Alter Rebbe my mother want to know how we're saying Kiddush equivalent to Kiddush Hashem and they explain it here we're adding a kvetch that the Indian of Kiddush Hashem is connected to Simcha Yismichu B'cha Kol Yisrael Makadosh Hashemecha Yismichu B'cha Kol Yisrael Makadosh Hashemecha the Jewish people Makadosh Hashem have Simcha so the Rebbe is going to explain Makadosh Hashem and by explaining Makadosh Hashem he's going to explain the idea and the need for the Yismichu B'cha that Makadosh Hashem doesn't necessarily mean martyrdom. It doesn't necessarily mean that a Jew is giving his life to the Eibishter. It simply means you're bringing a Kedusha to the Eibishter's name. So the Shaila is I thought, I would imagine the Eibishter's name is holy. So what could possibly be the idea that we're adding Kedusha to Shmei Shalak Kaddish Baruch? That's going to be the question. And in order to answer this question first the Rebbe is going to explain what the word shame means. Then he's going to explain the meaning of the word Mekadosh is Hashem. And then it's going to explain that Kiddush Hashem is connected to Simcha. And he begins for you was that to answer this question. We have to preface first what we say in the diving of Rosh Hashanah, Kaddish Ata Vnei Rashmecha. In the diving of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we add a big arichas in the third bracha Ata Kaddish, which has four uvachains. And at the very end we say, Kaddish Ad V'nei Rishmecha V'ein Nelika V'yibalodecha V'chosuf V'yigbe D'Shem Mitzvokeh Yisbar Mishpah Rokeh L'Kaddish Nech B'Zoch Barach Ta'ad Yishem HaMalach HaKaddish So at the very end we say these words, Kaddish Ad V'nei Rishmecha And the Rebbe is going to compare and contrast the words Kaddish Ad V'nei Rishmecha to the words Ata Kaddish V'Shem HaKaddish Zeh Koyal B'Chin Hashmei When it says the Ebesh's name is awesome Hashem is holy and His name is awesome it's going on the Ebesh's name, but the Ebesh's name, Kmei Shu Begilas, it's revealed. In other words, the words Nei Roshmecha are talking about a low Madreg in Shmei Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Shmei Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's in a state of Gila. And this proof is because Zehu HaHefresh, Bein Inyan, Ata Kadosh V'Shem HaKadosh, and Kadosh Atav Nei Roshmecha, and the Pasuk, which we say in a regular occasion, the third Baruch HaShem HaKadosh, Ata Kadosh V'Shem HaKadosh, Shem HaKadosh. And that's how Itaka said also on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim. You're holy and your name is holy. And at the end of this brach in the Yom Nireim we say, Kaddish Atta, you're holy. V'nei Roshmecha, your name is awesome. So the Rebbe says, there's a very big difference between the words Atta Kaddish V'Shem Kaddish and the words Kaddish Atta V'nei Roshmecha. What's the difference? And what the Rebbe explains is that although the words are the same in both, no, in one part it says Atta Kaddish V'Shem Kaddish, and the other one says, Kaddish Atta V'nei Roshmecha. So the words Atta Kaddish are the same in both. But on one it says Atta Kaddish V'shimcha Kaddish and the other one it says Kaddish Atta V'nei Roshmecha. So the Rebbe is going to explain Atta Kaddish V'shimcha Kaddish that shame is higher, is more hidden than the Kaddish Atta V'nei Roshmecha. Let the Rebbe do the talking. Says the Rebbe the found. In the Kaddish in the Pasuk in the beginning of the third bracha of Shemina Esa Atta Kaddish you are holy V'shimcha Kaddish your name is holy and holy. You know the way if you think about those three statements, Atta Kaddish means the Abishta lowers himself from being completely removed from the world to be above the world to the extent he could call him removed, Kaddish. 
Shimcha Kaddish means Eidin Tzav, the Eibish is name. It's a Matthias Nimtza, and therefore it exists in a way that it's removed from the world naturally. And Kadesh Shemichal Yehim Yalu Chasele, the Jewish people who by themselves are only in a Madrega of Teherahi, so through Avoida, Anche Kadesh Tiyan Le Yidna raised up from Tara to Kedusha. So when these three statements, Ata Kadesh, Veshemichal Kadesh, or Kadesh Shemichal Yehim Yalu you have three ideas. The first is that Atzmos Hamus comes down to be Kadesh. The second is that Edin Tzav is naturally Kadesh. And the third is that the Halalucha Yidna raised up to Kedusha by being, by saying Kedusha, being Mekayim Mitzvahs. But there's a difference still between Shimcha Kadesh and Neira Shmecha. Here's how. Then you have Shimcha Kadesh when you say that Hashem is holy. Atzmos of course Atah is holy. And then you follow up by saying Yabish his name is holy. It's a reference to Yabish his name. Which you and I know means they didn't save. However, it's Kameshu Kadesh Abuftal, how godliness is holy and removed. In other words, even though we're dealing with Shmai, which means Ayr, we're dealing with such a high Madregian Shmai, that's very, very far removed from the creation. Va'ad, how far removed is Shemichal Kadesh in the creation? Shubadugmas Atta Kadesh. It's comparable to the idea that the Abish to himself is called Kedusha. And of course, Atta Kadesh is Kedusha Sa'atmus. You are holy as a reference to the holiness of the Abishan himself. And of course, Hashem himself is not even holy. Hashem is holy means related from a distance. Nivda. The Abishan is not even holy. He has to lower himself in order to be engaged with us on a level of holiness. But even when he lowers himself to be engaged with us on a level of holiness, it's the holiness of Atmos Samhus. If you do a hafish, a pirish, ata lashanech, goes on atmos, ata kadish means atmos. So in Sal Baruchu, the way he's removed from the world, is removed from the world categorically. So since you say in one sequence, ata kadish, Vishim kadish, just like the Kedush of ata, or the Ebishter himself, is very far removed. The same is true, Shimcha, that Agam Shemavu Abakam and Makemis. Although my mother Echsidus explain, Shemizesh Shemachalik bin Atta Kaddish, Vishim Chakadish. You don't say Atta Vishim Chakadish, you say twice Kaddish. Atta Kaddish, Vishim Chakadish. Mukach proves, Shekidusha Shimcha, the holiness of Hashem's name is Lamato, Megidusha's Atmos, is not the same as the holiness of the Abishtin himself. The holiness of the Abishtin himself is he has to lower himself in order to be removed from the world. Mashenka and Eden Safe is natural state, is that it's removed from the world. Mekomakim, nevertheless, that Mekiv and Shevishim Chakadish, Babahem, Shech bin Atta Kaddish, since in this beginning of the third Brach of the Shimcha Kaddish follows Atta Kaddish, although Atta Kaddish is hard, in Shimcha Kaddish there's a proximity, there's a closeness between the Kedusha of the Abishta's name to the Kedusha of the Abishta himself as they go in one continuation, in one Hemshech. How they move and it's understood, Mizeh from this, Shagama Kedusha the Shimcha Kaddish, even when you say the Abishta's name is holy, which is lower than saying he is holy, it's Bedugmas Kedusha Atmas. It has some kind of indirect relatedness to the holiness of the Abishta himself. So the words Atta Kadesh are talking about how Hashem himself is removed from the world, but he's close enough to the world to call him Kadesh. And then when there's a Shemcha Kadesh, the Eidin Seiv, the name of the Abish is Kedusha, even though Shmei, as opposed to Atta, is a Metzias Nimtza, that, that's also questionable, even though Shmei is a lower Madrega than Atta, the Kedusha is similar because it goes in one sequence. Now, what the Rebbe is trying to say is that in this Pasuk, Atta Kadesh, Shemcha Kadesh, Shemcha is close to Atta. Whatever madrega that is, it's a very high madrega in there in Seif Shlosnei Atzim. Now in Hemchach Tafesh Samach Vov, the one of my mother Rosh Hashanah Samach Zayin is Kadosh Atav Vnei Reshmecha, and over there the Rebbe Rashab explains that Atah Kadosh Shimcha Kadosh Atah means Kedusha Sa'atzmos, and Shimcha Kadosh goes on Yecheles that Shmei, who who is Shmei is Shmei who, who is Shmei Echad Kadm Kagadnusa Yisbarach, which in the madrega of Yecheles. It's, very, it's actually difficult to understand how Kedusha of Shmai is lower than the Kedusha of Atta. But uh, that idea, Atta Kaddish, Shemcha Kaddish, makes the Eibishter's name, the In from Shem, an entirely theoretical thing because Yecheles is not a Matthias Nimtza. It's Kadm Kaged Musa Yisbarach. Masha Enkein, Kaddish Atta Vnei When you call Hashem Kaddish, and you don't call His name Kaddish, you call His name awesome, so you're not talking about the same idea of the name. You're talking about the name of the Eivishta, which you're going to see soon, goes on Edin Seif, the way it has a shaykhist to the world inherently, and because it's a Matthias Nimtz. Shalosh and Kodesh Eimer Akalat, in the end of the third block of Shemene Esrei, as we say it on the Yom Neroim, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. 
Will we say Kaddish Atta Venera Shmecha? You don't use the word Kaddish for shame, you only use the word Kaddish for Atta. Shanken Ashmecha Neda, Koy Emir Venera, Koy Abachin Shmei, it's a different level of Shmei. What's the level of Shmei? Which is Bachin Gilu. The level of the Abish's name which is revealed. In other words, the way the light of Hashem emerges in Abish in the kind of way. The first of all, it's a Matthias Nimta. And second of all, it reaches Kalim, and it's his Galus through the Kalim. Shadavkot Tayach. At this point, you're not going to call it holy, you're going to say it's awesome. So the words are the same. Atta and shame. But because in one place the Atta Kaddish, Rishim Kaddish, so shame means the level of the Abish's name, which is not a Matthias at all, like Atta. And since in the other part, like it says, Kaddish Atta Veneda Shmecha, although we're using the same word, it means a much lower Madrig. It means a Lakus, which is by definition in relationship with the world, because it's a union of Gilui. That's why we say Kadashata Venera Shmech. So the Rebbe says, before you explain, you have to explain Makache Shmech. But before you explain Makache Shmech, you have to explain what Shmech means. Why do you have to have Gedusha Shmech? The Rebbe's name is already holy. And the answer is because Makache Shmech means the Madrig of Shame, which is not Kad Mekaket Musi's Barak. It's not one with Atmos. It's in the state of Gili, and therefore you have to Makadesh as a shame. The Abish name is holy anyway, but you're adding a new Kedusha to it. Meaning to say, in this case, Kiddush Hashem doesn't mean martyrdom, giving away your life. The Kaddish Mesha La Kaddish Baruch In this case, Kiddush Hashem means Abish name is a level of Gilea Lakus. And you want to add to the level of Gilea Lakus, which is called shame, a higher Indian of Kiddush. As opposed to Atta Kaddish, Vashimcha Kaddish. Where in that Pasuk, shame goes on Atma Simahus. So it's called Kaddish, just like Atta is Kaddish. The example is for a king. When the king is locked away in his private chambers, a room inside a room, there isn't even a concept of being afraid of him. Because he's not available for you to be awed by him. So he's beyond Noira. He's Kaddish. And the king emerges and he shows himself. There's a possibility to have fear of him. So in the Psul Kemat HaKadosh, which you say in the beginning of the third Brach HaShem Nesri, At HaKadosh, Vashim HaKadosh is how Hashem is so far removed from the world, although He's holy, meaning to say, His relationship with the world is, but it's an indirect relationship with the world, it's not so proximate to elicit fear. Mashein Ken, the Pasa Kadosh Atta V'nei Roshmecha, Kadosh Atta means the same thing as Atta Kadosh. But Nei Roshmecha means that the Ebishter's name is close enough to us to elicit Maira. V'zeh Ho'i Makat Sheishmecha. And when it says in the davening of Shabbos, of Yom Tov, and the davening of Shabbos, also Makach Yishmech, but on Shabbos, you say, Vinuch of Akko Yisrael Makach Yishmech. And on Yom Tov, you say, Vitzmuch of Akko, Kol Yisrael Makach Yishmech, why do you have to have Kedusha Deshmei Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Because the Eivishter's name that's being described here is not the name which is one with the Eivishter, but rather the name, the name which is revealed. V'zeh in your Makach Yishmech, the reason you have to bring holiness, sanctity, to the name of a Kaddish Baruch, the Shmech, or Bechinus Hashem. Shmech means Hashem's name. But it's Hashem's name, Meishu Begila. Hashem's name is it's revealed. And because it's revealed, its relationship with the world is Venera Shmech. It's awesome in relationship with the world. And it can be made even more awesome. The Yisrael, Ayadei Ave Dosim, the Jewish people, they're avoidum, Makachem is Hashem, they bring a holiness to the name. Hainu Shem Mamshichem Beim, Kedushas Ha'atmos, they add to the name, the Kedushas Ha'atmos. So in this paragraph, we just define the word Shmech. But what does it mean to Abish's name? We mean Eidin Seif, which is in a state of Gilu. How do we know that we mean Eidin Seif, which is in a state of Gilu? So that ever brought us this whole juxtaposition of Atta Kaddish Vashim Kaddish, as opposed to Kaddish Atta Venei Rashmecha. And he explained that in the context of Atta Kaddish Vashim Kaddish, you cannot say Mekach Shmecha. But in the context of Kaddish Atta Venei Rashmecha, you could say Mekach Shmecha, because Shmecha, the name of Hashem, as it's being discussed here, is an Indian of Gilu. And Makachi Shmecha means you're adding to the Yalakus, which is the state of Gila, something which is even higher than Gila. And the Rebbe is going to proceed in the next paragraph to explain this more. So let's be clear. In this paragraph, we explain the meaning of Shmecha. And because Shmecha means what it means, that it's a Gila of Eden Save, there is therefore a concept of Makachi And now the Rebbe continues, he says, I want to explain further what Shmecha means. And he says, Shame will close when you know In this paragraph, the bottom of 20 and the top of 21, he's going to explain the Abish's name more. And he's just going to discuss it as if the idea of the Abish's name. 
and uh, as if the idea of the Abish does light, what we call in our culture Eid Ain Seif, get lachait, are one and the same thing. On the next page, on page 21, in the next paragraph, the Rebbe is going to separate Oyer from shame. But before he separates Oyer from shame, he joins together Oyer and shame and explains them as the same idea. And he continues, page 20, last paragraph. At the end of the first line, when his Ba'yel was explained in the two and Madam of Rosh Hashanah. The Ma'im Ishe Amal's Mima Mak and the Ma'im Mir Shuvi Shal Adar Shem Lo Kachi Shal Tov Avinecha, and then we finish with Shem Lo Farim Sfaseinu that those two Ma'amorim talked about the idea of David Shas Eratzon to create the world and the three Madrigas of Eratzon, Eratzon Golav, Eratzon Golav, Eratzon Golav, Eratzon Golav, and because of Mishael and Karkei Shein, the other Mishael and the Bais and the other, we're able to read about the Eibushet to have a renewed Ratzon. And the Rebbe says those three Madrigas of Ratzon are really three Madrigas of Eirin Seif. And he says, "Vayelo, we discussed in the Maimorim of Rosh Hashanah as Shabbos Shub, which is before the Melchama started." Shabachin and Seish of Neatzimtum. That although we're talking about the Lakus of Neatzimtum, everything is called about Musa. Nevertheless, the Yeshdam Kama Madrigas is a number of levels. And he tells you what the three levels are. They didn't say which is the Mokr of Mamalek Alamin. They didn't say which is the Mokr of Sevev Kalamin. And the Madrega of Eid say which is called Atmos. It's Oyer. It's not Moir. It's not Kadmin, Kakadmus, and Yechelis. It's Eid. Now, but then it's not in the state of Gilu. The first Madrega is Chinas Eirik Meshu Begilu, the light of the Abishta, which is in Lifni Atimtsum, destined for Gilu. And Gilu doesn't only mean Hashem is going to reveal it. Gilu means we're going to be able to receive it, which is called Gilu Atm of Shila El, which was the Mokr of Mamalek Alamin. This lowest madrega of it is consistent with the notion of Hashar Hashem guesstimates. Masha also leaves a pale how the words are going to look. And this third madrega of aid will be manifest in the world on the worldly level. And he continues and he says, this lowest madrega of in safe. Shayachin and Amalucha, this actual possibility of Hashem being so close to us, they can actually be our king. Parenthesis. But the actual kinging is only after the Tzimtzum, which is Ha'inyin Shal Gzeda Samelech, the notion of the king's decrees. So lift that Tzimtzum is the Ratz. But because lift that Tzimtzum is the Ratz and Galil Mlucha, after the Tzimtzum is Melucha Bapel Mamish. So the lowest Madre Gevedin Seif is Edin Seif, which is so close to the world that you could say that it exists for the sake of the world. The Rabbi here is sort of splitting it here. He's making three into four almost. He says, before the Abishtad has revealed Ratan to be a king. And is a king, in fact, Yesha Ratzlam Luchad is the will to be a king. By the people crowning the king, the Seder by Ratzlam Golalam Luchad, the king is around to be a king. These two things that we just read are in the previous Maimorim the same thing. They're called Ratzlam Golalam. He's dividing up the Ratzlam Golalam into two things the Melucha and the Ratzlam Luchad. But they're both the state of Gil. Then comes three lines from the bottom, Lifnei Zeh Yesha Ratzlam Luchad. Now, here, Slamukha doesn't mean Slamukha, doesn't mean sealed away in Atmos. Slamukha Batsmus, it simply means it's a Ratsum without urgency, which is called Machshava Veratsum. The beginning is Machshava, Shalmaila Miratsum, Mashachosha Vehichlet, be Atme Shiroy is Mach. He thought in himself about the possibility of being a king, and that's the middle Madreg. So, in the first Madreg, which is Ratsum Goli, there's the Malucha and there's Ratsum Malucha. And the middle of Madreg, there's the Machshava Veratsum. And then the highest Madreg, the Sibyl Ratsum Machshava Zu, the reason for the middle Madreg is Malchus Meshachas Ba'atzmus, which gives you Ratsum Amucha Batsmus Ila Malucha, Kameshin is Ba'a Ba'arucha Manamatena. So he divides it up into four ideas, but it's three to Tainus. The lowest Ratsum is he actually wants to be a king with a certain urgency, a certain desire, a certain passion. And in this itself, there's the kinging and there's the desire for king. Then there's the thought about it, and then how it locked away in Atmos and Hus, what's called Misha in the Karke in the other, Misha in the Bais, and the other was in the Malucha Bayet. So these are. See, so he's dividing, he's sort of splitting a hair. The, the first level has two aspects the Rats and Goli for Malucha, and then the Malucha Bapayal. This is both the Madreg of Oyer Goli, or to say it in Lush Narav, the Shir Batma Bakir Kalmash, also Liyad Bapayal, and then there's the Rats. Which is called the is the the rotsen of the Spheres Agnuses, and then the Esa Spheres Agnuses themselves. This is the Hashara Bapayel, that's the lowest level, and then the middle level is Bereshom and the Malk, and the highest level is Ratzna Mukhad Batz Musay. And these three levels of rotsen are compared to three Madrigas of Eirin Saf. And the three Madrigas of Eirin Saf are Shmoy. The Ebishta's name is Oir. At this point in the Maimer, we know no distinction between the word Ratz Eir and the word Shem. They're the same. Okay, the only issue is why do you have to be Makadish as Hashem? Because it's Hashem that's a lower Madreg. If you're talking about the Shem, which is Shimcha Kaddish, which is 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 Kaddish, which
you don't have to be makadashit, it's self kedushid so to speak. But when you're talking about the gili of shame, then you have to have the even makachi shmecha, which is what the Rebbe is now describing. And he says, Vaidei, Yavadei, Derei Shashana, the work of Rosh Hashanah, Mamshich, and Yitzhah, Zbachin, and Samaluch, and Mishar, Shadish, Yidin, and Mushash, and Atzmas. Now, of course, there's two approaches to this. One approach to this is that Yidin is able to make Eder this Ratzin, because Ebesh has the Ratzin Atzmi for Dira Betachtainim, Mishin, the Bayes, and the other Mishin, the Karkin, the and the other approach is that Yidin themselves are Moshe Shanatmas, like the famous tale from the Mitzvah Magad on the Maimir, Yisrael Allah Bamachshava, and the Rosh Hashanah Maimir. The focus was more on the first idea, that how could we arouse in the Abish to be Melech, when he decides he doesn't want to be Melech. Because the Abish has an Atmis Dekeratzen for having a home, Mishin the Bayis and the other, Mishin the Kaki and the other, and the Vey, the Rosh Hashanah Mamshich, and Yisrael, the Jewish people bring back again. And the Samalucha, the phenomena of the Abishta being a Melech, being interested in being a king. And as you know from Hasidus, what does it mean Abishta is being a king? That his investment in the world is not limited to what the world needs in order to exist, but the Abishta's investment in the world is himself. All of the Abishta. He gives himself to the world as if we own him. That's the degree of dedication of a king to his subject, as opposed to a dictator to those he dictates to. Kmei Shibat Musi is Barach, that the Malchas of Hashem, which was one of the Atmos brought forward. And he repeats again what he says in all of my modern based on the Maimir in, in Sidir. That everything goes back to Lat Muslim Hus. In other words, you must call all revelations of godliness in the world beyond simply giving the world existence are withdrawn. And Mistal the Gam Bachiris Pimis Atainuk, it removes those Pimis Atainuk. And again, if you know the two my modern of Rosh Hashanah, you know that in the first Maim Rosh Hashanah, Tainuk was never mentioned, only Rotten was mentioned. In the second Maim, the Maim is Shuvi Yisrael, the Rebbe mentioned the Yisrael Li Reish. And the connection between Reish and Oinig, the Rebbe wanted to say that in these my modern also, it's not only about renewing the Abish's Rotten, there's also one of renewing the Abish's Tainuk. But before we renew it, there's a withdrawal, Kvayachal, of the Abish's deep interest in creation from all Madregis of Rotten and even from all Madregis of Tainuk. Which is why Ham Shachah B'Rei Shashon is Me'atmos Mamish. On Rosh Hashanah, we bring down from the Ebi Shtar a renewed interest in the creation from Atmos Mamish by being made a Tainuk. And being made a Rotsen. The Tainuk is Yisrael Olav Machshavah and the Rotsen is Mishin the Karke and the other. But Ham Shachah Zuhay did Kiyah Shefer Nechso Stap. So we're renewing the Ebi Shtar's interest in, in the world. His will should come back down from Rosh Hashanah Batsmuse to Rosh Hashanah Mucha to Rosh Hashanah Nelem to Rosh Hashanah Golet to Rosh Hashanah Tebulucha B'Pel Mamish. And those lower madregas, the way the Abish is reinvested in the world, is called Shmecha, which is a lakus in a state of Gile, where you could say, Dina Makachi Shmecha, as you see later on. And he says, Vam Shacha Zuhu Yadet This he didn't have in those Maimorim. In those Maimorim, he said that the way we arouse it is because of Misha and the Karke and the other. Here he says that you blow a physical Shafir. And the physical shefer has a connection to atzmos because physical things are mushish and atzmos and mohos. And he spells it out: shefer gashmi, pe bashmi, and kel gashmi dafka. Physical shefer, a physical mouth, and a physical sound. The avit kia shefer in the kolapnim, although shefer is a spiritual thing, and the spiritual things are not gashmi, the ruchnim, the inner, an inner voice. Mekomakam shachas atzmos nas. The true the idea of shefer is revealing. Deep levels of the neshama, the madrig of chay, the madrig of echid, and even madrig of yochit, but the amshach has atmos is through the physical blowing of the shayfer, not the kavanah ruchnis, but the mice of tkiyah shayfer begashmis. Because I dezem mashlim and akavana by blowing the physical shayfer, we fulfill the purpose of zav akadosh baruch hu liyas leis baruch dira betachtein. Hashem has desired to have himself home in the lowest world. The inyan adir lets musi is baruch hu leibal yenim. The desire is to have a home in this, the lowest of world, not in the higher world. And he brings the Tanya Pedic Lamed Vav. Other Abed Elmas Ayin Rizidim Epon Avias Baruch is Davker Betachtoinim. So Misha in the Karke and the other means in Atzmos and Hus. There's a need of the Abish that we to be Melech in the world, and this need is satisfied by us making the Abish into a Melech and a Shashana. And it's because of this need that we're able to bring forward the Abish is interested in Maluch. And bringing forward from Helam Alagilui is revealing godliness from a hidden state to a revealed state. And when the godliness is revealed, it's called Shmech Neir Shmech. So we understand two things, right? The pasuk that our shir, it's a half a maimon, the middle half of this maimon is going on, is the words, First we explain the word shmecha, that it means Eid and Tzav, and we explain that it means Eid and Tzav, which is in a state of gilui. Then we're going to explain, I have to bring a holiness to Shmei Shalak HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and then it's going to say, In explaining shmecha, we've done half the job, so far. 
We've explained Hashmecha is the same thing as Oyer. Now the Rebbe is going to say Hashmecha is different than Oyer. And by saying Hashmecha is different than Oyer, he's going to argue that Shmecha is even lower than Oyer. There's different levels of Eri and Seif. And the lowest levels of Eri and Seif is the source of a Malakalam and Gilu. And this lowest level of Eri and Seif, which is the source of Malakalam, which is in a state of Gilu, needs Kiddush. But when you compound it by saying that it's not only a low madrig of Eir, it's actually Shmecha, it becomes even lower. In other words, until now, shame and Eir were the same. From now, shame and Eir are going to be different. And on the low end, shame is lower than Eir. On the high end, shame is higher than Eir. But on the low end, shame is lower than Eir. And therefore, the need for being Mekadosh as a shame is actually very, very sensible. And it begins the next paragraph. of Then you do a half shame. In the previous paragraph, we spoke about the correlation, the similarity, and shame. They're both ordered both gilif matzimus and mosein tzav baruchu, and we're dealing with gili shame, the gili of eri tzav, and the after kiddush hashem. Now we're going into the differences. That eir is higher than shame on the chitzon yisdika level, and shame is deeper than eir on the pnim yisdika level. And he explains the eir shaykh la moir. The very denotation of eir means that there's a source, which is the meaning of the statement eir mein ha moir. The light is main, is the same material as the source. What you call the Abish to the source only in as much as from the source the light will come. And the light emerges from the source with a capital S in a way that reflects the source absolutely perfectly and completely. So the Indian of Oyer is main Amor. The way I like to say it in my classes to my Talmidim is if you don't understand something in Kabbalah and Hasidus, ask him what's his last name. What's Oyer's last name? Me'ain Hamor. What's Ha'odah's last name? Vigilu. So here we're talking about the Madreg of Eir, which is Me'ein Hamoyer. The even when it's in the state of Giloy, it's a Giloy, which is Me'ein Hamoyer. Masha'in Kin, shame. Shame is lower. Because it's Chitseini, it's superficial, it's secondary, it's peripheral, Agabiyer. <coughs> now this is not the point at which to make great speeches. But it is the point to sort of remind ourselves of the basic ideas. If you're a student of mine on any level, you know that I like to say that Chochmah's HaKabola can be summarized in one word. And that one word is godliness. Elokus. Elokus versus Elokah. If you have to define it in two words, and then it's Odom and Ma'oid, as I've discussed many, many times. The concept of godliness is a very hard concept to explain, because on the one hand, it isn't the Eibishter, and on the other hand, it isn't not the Eibishter. Godliness is not a creation. Godliness is called an emanation. And godliness in the highest levels have no beginning. Just at the Eibishter, no beginning, Ebishtalinus also has no beginning. And there's a lot of contradictions that you have to sort of fuse together that on the one hand it's a gili bidarach mamela, on the other hand it's a gili ritzainis, in order to understand the basic idea of godliness. And of course in our culture the term that we use to denote godliness is oyer. So in general shame and oyer are the same idea. They're both the notion of godliness. I like to call godliness God interactive. Right. Hashem himself is a Metzius, built in Metzius Nimtz, he relates to nothing outside of himself because he exists non-existentially, has no relationship, not to time, not to space, not to matter, not to any other thing. Godliness is Hamshach of Agila. It's, it's the Eibishter, as the Eibishter has a relationship with things other than itself, as does himself, as does light. Or to use the language of the Rambam, which the Rebbe discusses in the Hadana Godel from Tavshin Lamed Hey, which the Rebbe was Magi and Tavshin Mem Hey, is that the Eibishter is called Motzi Leib Metzias Yala Adas Shu Eni Motzi, and Edin Seif is Motzi uh, Rishin. That's how I like to define it. Alakus versus Alaka is the Eibishter as the Metzias Nimtza, and when the Eibishter created the world, the way the Rebbe explains it, not had it before the Eibishter created the world. The Eibishter, so to speak, created himself. That doesn't mean Chazal Shalom that he made the Psaashinu and Achidish. He created the idea that the Ebishter is going to have a relationship with the world. So the Rambam calls it Matzirishin. We call it a Lakus. Here we're splitting a Lakus into two. Oyer and shame. 
In the previous paragraph, we spoke about them as a unit. Now we're splitting them into two. What's the difference? The difference is, in this notion of godliness, which is not the Ebishter anymore, it's not a creation yet, it's simply the Metzius Nimtz of the Ebishter Kvayochel. It's uh, God interactive, like I like to say. The Oyer idea is how it's reflecting the Ebishter. The shame idea is how it's relating to the world. So Oyer is shame and shame is Oyer, but there's a different emphasis. The whole Oyer's last name is Me'en Amoyer. When you meet godliness, all godliness tells you is about the Ebishter. When you meet the Abishta's name, what it's telling you is that there's somebody else who's calling him by that name. Hashem doesn't need a name unless there's something other. So although, mystically, which is the most important level, Oyer and Shem are the same thing. They're both a Lakus. They're not Nivroim, Chas V'Sholem. They're Natias, They're Gilu. It's much higher than the Madrig of Atzilus. Natias is Atzilus. It's Oyer. Hu Ishmei Bilvad, Hu Ishmei Echad, and all the rest. But when you split hairs, Oyer emphasizes how it's a reflection of the source. And as much as a reflection of the source, although it's God interactive, although it's not Gott, it's Getlich, although it's not Alakar, it's Alakus, like it says in the Maimorim. But it's Metzias, is to represent Gott or Nalaka. And in shame, it's all about the fact that the world can have a handle on him through it. And accordingly, shame is lower than Oyer. And once you understand that shame is lower than air, you understand this concept of Makach Shmecha, the Abish's name is godliness and a level which relates to worldliness, and therefore a new Kedusha can be added to it. And that's the direction that this Maimed is headed in. So we've read the first line of this paragraph that Oyer is Shaykh Laham Oyer, right? Inyan Amoyer, who Mashin Imshach Menu the whole idea of Oyer is that there's a source. And we call it a source because light comes from it. The Abish is not a moir. It is a tzimtzum in the lakus. That there should be inyan a moir, which is the shadish of inyan a oir. But when oir emerges from moir, its inyan is me'ein a moir. Ma'ashein kin shei, page 21, second paragraph, second line, as opposed to the Abish having a name, within the The notion of the Abish name is not just a reflection of what the Abish is, it's something even more superficial than that. Because she'ein yin negeela atzmei kvayachal, the Abish doesn't need a name. Even in as much as the Abishta, Mitzat Shleim Musa needs oil, but the oil that the Abishta needs, Kvayochel, Mitzat Shleim Musa does not have to have a name. And when do you have to have a name? It acts for the benefit of some other. Just like in the human experience, in the worldly experience, if you're the only being in the creation, you don't have to have a name because you, in relationship with yourself, don't need to identify yourself, it's only somebody other it needs to call you by that name. So when you speak about the Abish as having a name, that automatically presumes that there is another that's able to identify him by his name. And if not for the fact that there was this presumption of another, there wouldn't be a name. The only reason the Abish has a name is because there's another. That that other, that means you and me, should be able to call the Abish to using the name. And the explains it in the Marshall. So a human being is in one place. And another human being is in another place. And the second human being wants to get the attention of the first place, he needs to Hashem, the first person, needs to have a name. And and then when the second person, as Kedeh calls the first person by his name, when Nifne Lavi turns towards him. So the name is only necessary when there is somebody else who's being a Kedeh. And the same is true, you're talking about the Abish Delamai law, when the Abish is by himself, he doesn't need a name. The truth of the matter is, you can even ask the question, the Abish is by himself, why he has to have oil. But there's explanations of Hasidus because the, the, the Shleimus has to have two Shleimus. The Shleimus of Matzil Leibim Matthias, his head that Matthias, and the Shleimus of Matthias, which is Inyan Ha'oyer. But shame is not part of the Abish Shleimus as he is by himself. Shame is about us being able to relate to him. Which is why you do it, it's known. Shamashal the oir when Hasidus brings the marshal for oir, which is godliness, which is about me'ena moir, and they sometimes bring a ringin amalchus to describe by Hashem as the king over the world. Now the definition of malchus is the mida and elokus which exists for another. Ein melech b'leyam. Even though the Eibushte is metzias adain elam asher malach b'tedem kol yitzur nivra, Hashem can have melucha b'etem. But the union of Midas and Malchus, as opposed to Chochmah and Bina, and even as opposed to Chazd and Gevura, is all about there being another over which one kings. So if you want to describe the concept of Hashem being a king within the scheme of godliness, 
and use the Moshe of Eirein Seif, Hamavur Bekama Mekemis. So the Rebbe says, "Ain't a Moshe Mechovin Lagami." It's not a very good Moshe. Now there's no Mekayis here. I did not look in the Tafre Shlamet, but I'm going to assume that this all is from the Rebbe Marash. That although in some my modem, when they want to describe Hashem as a Melech, they use the Moshe of Eirein. The Shem Melech Gei is Lavish the Lavush of Eir Eite Eir Kasalma. The Rebbe says the Moshe of Eir, in as much as we understand what Eir means, as Mein Amoyer, is really not properly representative of the Indian of Melucha. Why? Because the concept of godliness, in as much as it's not God, is only about the idea that the Eibishter has been brought forward into a Matthias name, so the Eibishter is brought forward into a state of the Eibishter's interactive, but it's based on his Shleimus. Okay, now, as we said earlier in the beginning of this paragraph, the idea of the Eibishter is being called the source. And even the idea that the is being called the source is also already a big symptom, but that there should be from him something which is sourced, which is oir, which is elokus, which is getlechkeit. But this oir, this getlechkeit, which is sourced by the Abish to being a source, is about the shleimus of the source and no more. Mashainkin Amalcha, as opposed to the being a king, who in Yenchit says something very peripheral. Because the king means that there is an Am. Shein in the that it doesn't touch the Abish as he is by himself without the Zulas. So the Abish being a Melech presumes that there is an Am, and if you take away the Am, or if you take away the Abish's relationship with the Am, the concept of Malchus, so to speak, breaks down. And the Rebbe proves it. Because we all know. That the Iker of Elokus, the idea of Elokus, of Godness as it exists on a level of Iker for the core reason it exists, is not Masha Ha'elam Eis Mishav and Yemena that worlds are created by it, Kimavua Batayda Eir. The Abish cannot be defined by the creation. Hashem's existence has nothing to do with the creation. He's the creator, but he's not defined by it. Here we're saying Abish, the leanness, Elokus, cannot be defined by the creation, although Elokus is not Alaka. It's Eir, not Moed. It's Matthias Nimtza, not any Matzi. But it also does not exist for the sake of creation of the world. The Cholinian Aisavatelmas and the phenomenon of creation is Rakhm Bachinus Ais Tov, the last letter of the Aleph based Tov, which is Madega Chitach Tainikum, who will be of the Yikra. And the idea of Ais Tov, which is the Indian Amalchus. So Malchus, how in the Lakus there is something about world. But higher than Malchus, the Lakus as it is by itself, it's not about world. So when you use when you generalize, really. And the generalization would be that Oyed and Shem are the same thing. Oyed is a reflection of the source. Shem is the benefit of Azulas. When you generalize and you say both of them are the same thing, why? Because you're not talking about the Abishter. You're not talking about the creation yet. You're talking about something which is Abishter leanest. So in general, Oyed and Shem are the same. But specifically, it's not the same. And therefore, when we talk about the particular meat of Malchus, which cannot be without Azulas, the marshal of godliness is not sufficient. And when you want to describe the Abish as a melech, Valachain, Ha Moshal, Hamatim, Linyan, Hamalchosu, the appropriate marshal, to discuss Alakus, how godliness has with itself the phenomenon of kingship, is like Ha Moshal the Eid is not the metaphor of light, Pima Moshal the Shade, the metaphor of a name. Now the name is also a light, and the light is also something that calls a name. But the name has the component that the other knows it, and it exists for the benefit of the other, as opposed to Eid. In as much as the whole motion of Hashem being a king is about creation, because Malchus who in Yenachitani is, said the Rebbe says, Harayze Dugmath Shema Od, this is like the name of a human being. Shurak, Bishel Azulas, if you are the only human being in the universe, you don't have a name. You certainly don't use it. You probably don't even know it. The name is only necessary because somebody else needs to benefit from using it. Rumasha all them come issue with the act of you being as by his lonesome. And you need to be shame called his not called forward by a name because his existence is only in relationship itself. The gamma hakaka she needs some shame and even the being is given a name. So the only reason he's given a name is because he should be an, a base yad, a handle on this human being. In Igam was even then calling in a shame. The whole reason he's been given this name is Rak. Mashal Yodeh, it's only because through this name is Nif Nivinim Shech Azulasa, he turns and he's drawn to another. So this is the idea of a name, only when there's another. Now, Rabbi said, I want to point something out. There are two concepts. The first concept is creation, and the second concept is the purpose of creation. In the scheme of creation, the Abishta's investment is very limited. 
and therefore the scheme of creation you don't want to say that the Abish creates the world with oil, you want to say the Abish creates the world with shame. You don't want to say that it creates the world with madrig of air, which is main amad. You want to say that it creates the world with a of air, it's a new even a new emlech. But that's only when you're looking at the world without its purpose. When you're looking at the world with its purpose, it's exactly the opposite. Like it says in Shada Yichid Vemunah, in the beginning of Painting Zion, which is one of my favorite points to reiterate and reiterate and reiterate, that the Zayar asks the question, Al Tareba asks the question, why does the Zayar speak about Yichud Yilah and Yichud Tato? Meaning to say, if Yichud Yilah is true, Yichud Yilah is false. So why do we say this as Yichud Tato, even though we know that Shema Yisrael, Adinoy Aleheinu, Adinoy Achad is Yichud Yilah, and the Al Tareba's answer is because the Ibish goes away from Yichud Yilah. And he lowers himself, you could so he should be able to be a melech. All of it saying, I know emlech. And it seems to me that the idea of a no emlech is quite consistent with the Indian of Sava Kadesh Baruch Uliyas Leis Baruch Dir Betachtenim. Just like Tachtenim is something which is much lower and separate from the Abishtad, Malucha Ein Melech Balayam is also Hashem's involved in something which is much lower. So when you look at the creation on the creation level, you say you cannot associate the world. To godliness, you have to associate the world to the Abishta's name. But with them, when you add the idea of Pneumius, that Hashem is invested in the world, and he's talking the Melech Olam, not only in the sense that he's created the world with a few words, but as the king, he gives himself to the world completely, now the dish is turned on its head. Malchus, which is lower, becomes much higher, much deeper. Shame, which is lower, becomes much higher, much deeper than Oil. And that's what the Rebbe is going to explain. On the surface of it, Shame exists for Azulas. Oid exists in the Atma, so Oid is higher and shame is lower. And as much as Hashem creates the world, the appropriate allusion would be Malchusa Yizbarach, shame and not Oid. Says the Rebbe, Omnam, however, Le'idar Giz, there's another side to this coin. And I'm five lines in the bottom of page 21, we have the number 10 in your text. Yeshmaile, Bishem, Aleh, there's another side to the coin. At the level of Godness, which is called a name, that only exists because there's another, there's going to be another has an advantage over the level of godness that exists that's called Eir, which is what is that? Godliness exists because God exists. For whatever reason, the way the is understood, there he has a face. Even though he himself was a Matthias, 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 he exists non-existentially. The Eibishter has what's called Matthias, Godliness as it exists, and I said to you before, the Abish that as he is before creation has the mile of Enimatsu and has the mile of Matsu, and the mile of Matsu includes Madrega Oir. But since Oir exists to be Mashlam Atmos, the Oir does not have Atmos within itself. It's just that Atmos benefits by there being Oir. The Agam, even though Shaydeh Eir on Yedimus Amor, godliness informs us of the source with a capital S since we see godliness. We know the Abishtir is the source of that godliness, Veda Main Amur, the light of the reflection of the source. It Ma'in is Ma'in means the same color. That's what it means literally. Right? Ain Hatchelis. Ain Hargom Ain means the countenance, how it looks. Means it's a countenance, it's like Bedelech. Bedelech means crystal. So means it's like the source. The light looks like the source, same color as the source. But since the godliness exists simply to complete what God is, godliness does not carry God, it's Himself within itself. It simply makes God whole, but it's secondary to God. But Abish having a name means Hashem wants it to be another. And Hashem wants to have a relationship with that other. Moreover, he wants that other to have a relationship with him. And to affect this, he gave himself a name to allow that other to identify him and to call him. When that other calls him using his name, the reaction is not only from the name, the reaction is from the source of the name, the owner of that name, which is the Abish to himself. The name of the Abishter, when you call Hashem, he turns and he turns in his essence. Just like when you turn to call a person by his name, who the person turns in all that he is. Like we know from the Sikhs and the Maimara, when a person faints, 
Sha'oz mistalak mi menu chayesagola. The reason for the faint is because life that's been manifest in the body on the level that fills the mind, heart, and the senses in the way which creates awareness and consciousness is departed. One of the solutions to bring a person back from a faint in addition to using smelling salt is Leich Hashem Eshmei Ba'ozni. He whispers his name in his ear, which calls the person forward. So the name of a person is secondary to the person. But when you call that person, he turns, he turns not just in his secondary component, the essence turns as well. Hashem is that movement, which proves even though the only reason godliness has a level of a shame is for the sake of Azulas, which makes it chitzenius, like Malchus. But when it's activated, when it's fulfilling its purpose, the name not only allows for the relationship with the world, but when the world relates to the Eibishter's name and the Eibishter responds, the source of the name, the Eibishter himself, turns, which is it draws the source, the Abish to himself, which is higher than life and even higher than the concept of Oyer. So the name only exists when the Abish has a world. But the way the Abish sets up his relationship with his world, this that he has a name, to have a relationship with the world, engages him, the source of the name, which is much higher than him. Of course, you all know the famous story, which is the Mashpi's classic representation of this idea. Kiyaduum of course, Tzamatzari was a little boy and he was a Yasim and his Zayda was raising him and he was sitting on his grandfather's lap and caressing his Zayda's beard and saying affectionately Zayda, the Dal Terebbe. Al Terebbe was a Pikeach and the Tzamatzari was Butzen Butzen Mekitvi Yediyah. So the Al-Trebbe said to the Tzemach Tzedek, that's the Zedah, that's the Zedah's board. You're not, this is not the Zedah, the Zedah's beard. So he grabbed his nose, like the Allah is, the nose is the semen of Chayes. Lagabi Eglarufa Chulu. Moidadin, Moidadu. So he grabs al Trebbe's nose, and he says Zedah, and al Trebbe says again, that's the Zedah, that's the Zedah's nose, it's not the Zedah. So he grabbed one of the eyebrows, and he had the payas. The Zedah is not to be found. So the Tzemach Tzedek couldn't be outdone, he, he leaves his, the room, he always goes and waits a few minutes and he throws something on the ground very hard, makes a big bang, and he starts to scream like as if he got hurt. Al Tadeb comes running out of his room to see what happened, and the Tzemach Tzedek is screaming Zayda. And when the Tzemach Tzedek sees his grandfather, he says, Oh, to the Zayda, he points, This is the Zayda. Now you can't deny it, right? Because I called Zayda and the nose didn't come, the beard didn't come, the Zayda came. So this is it. A name is only necessary for Azulas. But the way the Abish sets up the name, and the same is true of Midas Hamalchus, on the one hand, it's Moschitzenia Zekemida, on the other hand, when it's being used to fulfill the purpose of creation, it calls forth Atmos and Hussein Sayy Baruch. And here, shame, which is in Hishtashlus, lower than Eir, reaches deeper than Eir. Same is true. When you call a person by his name, when you call a person by his name, and if the Rahatmus the we learned this line before. Three lines to the top of page 22, number 11, which may show being in Hashem Lamata, just as it's true by the idea of a name in a human being, that it may be secondary to what the human being is per se, but it's primary when it comes to the relationship to this human being. And this is certainly so when you're talking about Hashem Lamata, the Abish, this name. The Abish that creates a level of godliness which is called Oyer, that exists in Shlem Atmos. Then he quotes a much lower level, it's also godliness, but it's called the Gili of Eden Safe. Which is close to worldliness, which is called shame or shmecha, and it exists because there's going to be a world which makes it much lower than the Madrig of it. However, when one calls that name, the Abishta turns on a level which is even higher than the Oyd and the Moed, which are otherwise closer to the Abishta. And he concludes the idea that he calls to the Abishta from the depth. The idea it calls the Abish from the narrowness, meaning we're calling from the Abish from a place of distance and remoteness, but when we call him, he responds from his depth and his remoteness because he's reacting to the fact that we called him by his name, by not just giving us his name, but giving us himself. She saw al Kerem la Kadish Baruch of the Jewish people called the Abish. Dugma saw the Makedal Havid Abish Mayak a person who calls his friend by his name. Now I want to remind you that the Maimimimimak. Rosh Hashanah, the first Maimir of Tafshin Lamed Dalet. And to a lesser degree, the Maimir of Shuvah, which is the second Maimir of Tafshin Lamed Dalet, the Rebbe defined Kasicha as something very, very uh, simple. You're calling the Abish and you call your friend as if it's no big deal. Now, the Rebbe said, the Rebbe is the Gazan that asked the question. 
how could you be calling me mamakim and the only thing you're doing is kasich, which is an Indian hachichi tzaini. And the Rebbe answered, when you're on such a high level, calling the Abish is no big deal. But here, the Rebbe is giving us the impression that it's a very big deal. The idea they were able to call the Abish by his name is extraordinarily deep. The Abish is responding, not just Madregi, where the name exists, which allows us to know who he is and to call him, but he turns with his whole etzim. The Zem Mashin is by Yalil, we discussed earlier in Rosh Hashanah, Mamshiach, Yisrael, Matzmusi, is Baruch, we bring by Fatmas, and Mosein, Sal, Baruch, because of the principle of Misha in the Karka, Misha in the Ba'is, and the Oh, the Mdadir, the Mamek, and Rosh Hashanah, he says, Mar before, Hakriya Bishmei, you're calling only his name, and he responds. So the downside of Shmei is that it only exists for the world. The upside of it is that it exists for Shlomo, Misha, Atmos. The upside of shame is that when you call shame, even though it exists for Anina and Chitzaini, the response is Anina Pnimi Viat. So we explained. Oyer, how Oyer and Shem are the same. We explained how Oyer and Shem are different, and a Bechitzonius Shem is lower than Oyer, and Bechitzonius has a very, very big mile over Oyer. But which Madreg of Shem does this apply to? Which Madreg of the Abish's name can you say that by itself, but it's an Indian and when you call him, it's Nifta Bechalat Musa? Of course, it's only on very Chitzonistic levels, because the Pnimistic levels is very, very different. And that's what we said in the beginning of today's Shir. For the Rebbe Marash Maimim, Makachi Shmecha means how the Abish has a relationship with the world. Not how the Abish is by himself, the Abish has a relationship with the world. Now, if you're paying attention, there's two expressions here. One expression is called Kriya B'Shem, and the other expression is Makachi Shmecha, Lakadish is Hashem. And the Pashas are the same expression, they're just uh, different versions of the same idea. So when you call the Abish his name, you're being Mamshech. From Helma la Gilu, like it says in Tanya Sof Perek Lamitzayim, Kadam Akeda la Chaveri, Kadam Akeda la Bnei, and Mekachi Shmech also means that you're bringing forth Kedushas Atmos into the shame. But maybe specifically, these are two steps. Like doing the mitzvah is Kriyas Hashem, and then Mekachi Shmech is beyond that. I'm just pointing out that there are these two expressions. But one thing is certainly uh, a truth, and that is that we have in Chasidus. Or sugya arucha varucha with an ayin and an aleph about what we accomplish when we're doing mitzvahs, and there's a variety of different ways of saying it. One of the ways of saying it is called la askona roza dishme askona but a tough to be misakin the secret of the abish's name. The abish has a name, and the name of the abish goes on the midas and the sviras of alakus and atzilus. And la askona roza dishme means to be mitakin the secret of the abish's name, which is explained to mean. Each time we do a mitzvah, we're strengthening one of the Ramach Eivinim, the Malka, which means we're strengthening the Keli, we're making the Keli have more detail, more pirot, and therefore we're Mamshech more oir. Alternatively, it said, it says, with Isam Eise, is Chartem, it's called Mitzvah Havaya, Vasisem Oisa. You see the tzitzis, you remember the mitzvahs, Vasisem Eisem, and you're going to do them. So it says oisam missing an aleph, and it's vasisam oisam vasisam atem mal ani alechem kiilu asauni. That when you're doing a mitzvah, it's as if you're doing the abish, you're creating the abish. What does it mean creating the abish? You can't create the abish. It means you're being marchiv the kalim of atzilus, and you're being mamshach additional oil, and that's called kiilu asauni. And it says in the Maimon, we had a recently one of the Maimon that we learned. Why does it say kiilu asauni? Because when we're doing a mitzvah, we're only being mamshach the keli. We're doing the keli. The oil comes by itself. And therefore, it's only ki'ilu asa'uni because we're only creating the keli and the Abish decides that oil is going to be nimshach, just like begashmi is when a person's body physically grows. Automatically, there's more life from the neshama in the guv hazishet and the maimorim. Similarly, when we do a mitzvah, we're mamshach more oil. And by the way, by contrast, when you say in Vayemer, so the beginning of Vayemer is or isam eis chartem t'komitz to the Shem vasisam eisam, for like sasur rachel vafu achrei nechem that you're doing, you're creating the kalim, or the kalim, the kalim is kilo was only the eiros nimshach memela, and when you keep the abish, this mitzvah to protect you from going astray. But then it says leman tiskru vasisam is called mitzvah isai, and here it doesn't say mitzvah Hashem, it says mitzvah isai, and it's explained in Chassidus, and the marker of it is Isaiah. That mitzvah savaya and yavit in samachei bariches. This mitzvah samelach, which is in Malchus, mitzvah savaya, which is in Zoh, which is the typical idea of doing mitzvah pikabol, the shemir echad kuchu b'rechos chinte, laskon and razad shmei and the rest, and mitzvah says keser. And over there we say 
that if a yid doesn't mitzvah on that highest madrege, is not just mamshir the kenli, is mamshir the oyer, and that's why it says v'isem kadesh melakechim. I see the misal shikos name kadesh shikuru ashmeish ala kadosh baruch when you're holding by the third madrege. Which is higher than Atzilas, you're not just creating the Kaili and the Eid is Nimshach by itself, you're not just creating the Atzmi. That's a Maimon Amuzi, it's a parenthesis. But there's a classic Suyi in Hasidus that explains the accomplishment of mitzvahs as understood in the framework of Kabbalah, that it's an Atzilas. Every time a Yid does a mitzvah, he's expanding one of the Eivorim, one of the Kalim of Atzilas, and more Eid is Nimshach, it's called Askal, it's called the it's called it's alternatively called the Shem Yichud, Kutcher Bichu and so on. But they have another idea. And the other idea is what our Maimed is talking to. This is called Makache Shmecha. That you're not only bringing down more oil into the Kalim, you're bringing Mamshach Atzmos into Mitzvahs. And this, I wrote in the margin, if you look in the first Maimed in the Samach Vov, at the end. He speaks about the Ibtach Tainim and the Mitzvah of Mamshach Atmos, and he connects it to the Aces of Shem Avaya and the Shem Yechaz, which is But it's very clear that what he's speaking about in that Maimed is not the idea of bringing the Aces into the Kalim of Atilas, it's being Mamshach Atmos. And that's what our Maimed is doing. Our Maimed is saying, So the first thing we did, which was until now in the Shia, it explained what Shmoy Shalak Adish Baruch means. Shmoy means Alakus, godliness. But Shmoy means Alakus, which is in a state of Gili, which is Bishvila Elamis which makes it chitzenius, which makes it toffel, which makes it only when there's a zulaz. But on the other hand, when you call a by Shema, is nifne b'chalat musik. So the lower madrigas of Edein Seif, which are called shame, rather than oyer. Shame is lower, oyer is higher. But the lower madrigas of Edein Seif, which only exist because we, Hashem is planning to create us, and Kriyachal, He creates Himself, right? Matzid which is Mamzi called Nimta, that we should exist in a, proximate, in a way that's proximate to so he has Kayachal a shame, and then with that shame he creates us, which is Chitzarius. But then when we call him by his name, is Nifta Bachalat Smus. It's not expressed shame. Makache Shmecha, as it's going to be explained here, doesn't only mean that we're adding oilus into Kalim, which is the typical understanding of mitzvahs, but we're literally Mamchach Atmos into mitzvahs. My only uncertainty, and I'm saying this before I read, is, is the Rebbe saying one thing or two things? Is the Rebbe saying, first of all, when you do a mitzvah, you're a laskon or the shmei, you bring oid into kalim. And maybe this is called kaire shmei, calling the Ebi by his name. And then beyond that, in addition to being mamshach oid into kalim, you bring mamshach atzmos mamish. And this is what we call makache shmecha. Is it two separate ideas or one idea? My inclination, my leaning is that it's one idea. And I, I just want to say that, of course, I'm immersed in the Maimodim of Tishri of Tafshan Lamed and I feel very fortunate, I feel very lucky. This is my lab, I learned a lot of things, 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 but the Rebbe is so into mitzvahs in these Maimodim. There's three Maimodim about Lulav. There's a Sukkot Teishu Shiva Yisrael, and then there is Chag HaSukkot Teishu Shiva Yisrael, and then there is Chag HaSukkot Teishu Shiva Yisrael, and then all three my modem, the, the first one talks about the Dalad Minim, the second one and the third one talks about the Sukkah, but he immediately connects it also to the Dalad Minim, especially the third Maimed, and he's trying to make the point that for some reason, Sukkahs, the Mitzvah of Sukkah, and even the Dalad Minim, are more connected to Gashmias than any other Mitzvah Gashmias, because that's what Achilah is eating and drinking, and accordingly it's Mamshech Atzmus more than any other Mitzvah. And if I, my hergish is at all right, the Rebbe is saying, when you go out into the street, and you meet a Yid, especially a soldier, who's going to the front and is being Mesa Nefesh Rapel Mamish, to a Megan and Abne Yisro, and you shake a lulav with him, you gave him an even Atmos, Makache Shmecha, which is not only the Atmos that is found in the most mitzvahs, it's Atmos which is found dafk in the midst of Sukkah, which is Kedush Zaguf, the Rebbe calls it in the next Bible you'll see. And that somehow the Gedushas Aguf of Sukkah is connected to the Gedushas Aguf of Lulav more than any other mitzvah you'll see in the next Maimah. So the Rebbe is obsessed with the idea that physical mitzvahs are Mamshach Atzmah. This is what's going on in this Maimah and in this whole Tishrei. The Chiddush of this Maimah is that in addition to speaking about mitzvahs being Mamshach Atzmah, he also speaks to the Baal Sasimcha, which you're going to see in the next paragraph. But we're ready to start reading the second paragraph on page 22, where the Rebbe develops the Indian of Kiyam and Mitzvah. says, Vihine. The idea of calling Hashem by His name in general is in Yikim Teda Mitzvah, doing Mitzvah. By the way, you learn Teda, you're also calling the Abish's name. Teda is called Mikra, 
Because Chol Tein Akulish Meisav Shalak Kadosh Baruch Hu, and when you learn in Teresh B'Ksav, you're calling the Eibushter. The Chiddush and Mitzvahs over Torah, obviously Mitzvahs Advarim Gashmi and Teres and Inyan Rochni, but the Chiddush in Kabbalah is when you're doing a Mitzvah, you're creating a Keli for the Kedush, for the Kriya, for the Lakus. When you're learning Torah, you, you're you're creating a you call it the Lakus itself. Okay, do it is known to Tayru Mitzvah 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 and Mitzvah but particularly Mitzvah Mitzvah here is on the secret of the Abishnah's name and when you're doing a Mitzvah you're enhancing that secret you're being what's called Laskana you're being Masakana and I say she saw Makayim as Tayru Mitzvah you do Mitzvah practically I say he's a him Kainim Mishmei they're calling the Abishnah by his name they're calling forward the Adin Saf which is higher than Ishtashos to come into Ishtashos and in the case of Mitzvah it should be mislabish and kalim says the Rebbe in Ayde Zehim. I'm sheikh and they bring on Atma. So if you want to read this as two steps, you're welcome to. Step number one, when he does a mitzvah, he's being mam sheikh listen to kalim. And of course, you know the chsidis that anytime he does a mitzvah, makes a bracha. It says in Tayyid and Bereshis, it's explained by Rechaz Men in my modem, that the bracha on the mitzvah is only the Rabbana, but it's even higher than the mitzvah itself. Here, the implication is, if you wish, when you're doing a mitzvah, you're mamshach ain't into keli, and after you're mamshach ain't into the keli, you're mamshach atzmas. And he explains, is that how mamshach ain't into mitzvah before you do a mitzvah l'shem yich and kuchem b'nei chosh chinte. And he doesn't explain what l'shem yich and kuchem b'nei chosh chinte means. And you could say this in two ways. Because you could understand l'shem yich and kuchem b'nei chosh chinte in two ways. You could understand l'shem yich and kuchem b'nei chosh chinte as being mamshach ain't into keli, and that's gone and that's the shmei. And you could also choose to understand that the way it's explained at the end of the first Maimon in the Hemshech of Tofresh Tamach Vov, that it's a Havai of Atmos and Mahus. But then he continues, Hashem made us holy and he gave us mitzvahs. And although here it's not spelled out, if you look, I wrote on the bottom, top of your page 22, I was mitzayin to page 26, which is in the next Maimon, which I was learning this afternoon, where the Rebbe splits it up into two. means the person. And he gave him a mitzvah. And then when we're doing the mitzvah, we're makach shmecha. We're bringing Atmos into the Dava Gashmi. So although here the Rebbe doesn't so explicitly separate it in the later Maimon, the Rebbe is going to say, Shekin the Shalom Mitzvah 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 was Amshech Atmos is brought into the person or brought out of the person to give Makayach to be able to do the Mitzvah. And then Makach Shmecha means you're bringing that Atmos into the Dava Gashmi when doing the Mitzvah in fact. She saw Mamshech and Kedusha by Mitzvah that the Jewish people, and again I'm going to repeat myself, first of all, Bring a kedusha into themselves, asher kedushanu b'mitzvah itself, and then with that kedusha, they bring a mitz a kedusha to the dvarim gashmiim, which is bedug masa inyan the makachi shmecha. It's comparable to the notion of making the Abish's name holy, even though Hashem's name is already holy. Hashem's name is eidin tzav. So Hashem's name is eidin tzav. Its natural state is kedusha b'chalal alakus oyer. Its kaddish removed the even the lowest madrigas of ed, even madrigas of gilui and hamshach and his lapshus. Like shame, are also the for kedusha. Nevertheless, when he does a mitzvah, he's adding more kedusha to the Abish's name, because the kedusha which exists the mitzvah by itself is a chetanyas the kedusha, and the kedusha that he did bring the mitzvah when he performs the mitzvah is atzmos mamish okmei mitzvahs mila sukkah v'tfil. Using mila sukkah as an example, you'll see in a moment that he's going to focus particularly on tfil. Shoch kol tera kol tfil not tera is compared to tfil. Nevertheless, kasher at tfil menachem ala shoch when the tfil is sitting on the table. Even though then also, when he said, when he writes, Pashas Kaddish Aksuva Beklav, the Pashas Kaddish was written on the parchment. And the same is true of the Ritzua. And the same is true of Sharon Yon Yatfil. There is a Dein Seif, that physical thing which has been made in the Kedush of Stam. Has Kedush of Edein Seif, Yesh, Remez, Lashra, Seidei Chachmal Yene. It's a hint for the manifesting of the light of the supernal wisdom. Nevertheless, whatever the word remez means, when you're talking about a lakus, the light is not fully revealed in it. And today is chaf tishrei, and chaf tishrei in the chitas of Tanya. In Ashana Pshuta, you read the beginning of Yerus Kedesh Chov Gimel with Al Tereba discusses different word Hashra, and the word is slapped. The Hashra means the godliness is coming down just as the godliness is by itself. So before you do the mitzvah, and then even though you have the chafsa shal mitzvah, and it was made l'shem shamayim, and it has a kedusha and so on, ain't a shade above mamish. The godliness is not manifest in that physical thing in a way of a shlav mamish. It's only b'derech adam is It's only a hint, and I don't know what this means. And the Rebbe does not explain it. I would imagine that it's explained someplace else, but I don't know.
He brings down that the godliness of that mitzvah should be revealed in the keli of that mitzvah. And he's going to split it up into several stages. And again, I'm using my own form here. Although it's a nine sarachi and it's a rachbir, it's a besupek de kazach. Number one, you're bringing down Eiris into the kalim of Atzilus. The mitzvahs are kalim of Atzilus. And you're bringing down into kalim of Atzilus the eight ain't safe, which is meant to be begilim. But before it's only a gilim, a way of remez, it should be begilim mamsh. Number two, vachamam shech mechin is ba'al aros. You bring down the, the master of the world, the Abish is the source of mitzvahs. And this l'cha'ira means atzmos. That not only are you bringing down aid into the keli, but when you're doing a mitzvah, the anyi makache shmecha is that not only are you bringing down aid into the keli, I'm bringing mamshach atzmos into the mitzvah. Gashmias, for all the reasons the Rebbe gave, that at- Gashmias is Moshe and atzmos, like the Rebbe said in the previous Maimed. The Rebbe is going to say it on top of the next page, 24. That it says in Maimed, Admoram Tsoi Babir Yazosh, Ayesh, Anivra Gashmi. Who yesh or amitu? The physical yesh is the yesh of atzmos and hus ein sav baruchu. So when you do a mitzvah, a physical thing, you magal the alakus that physical thing with the kedusha sa atzmos, and that's makach shmech, and that's called balarot. So it's a second step. The first step is yamam shachir in seif giluyim into kalim. The second step is yamam shach balarot, which is the nifan atzmos. But then he says the third step. Well, the man leyeish the mitzvah you're doing a mitzvah, you're bringing down God, which is even higher than balarot. And why? Shalai bechdei shaer yum shach lamata since. When you're doing a mitzvah, you want to be Mekadosh Hashem. And Mekadosh Hashem does not only mean you want to bring down the oil, the godliness of the mitzvah into Kalim, but you want to bring down Atzmah, which is called Baal Aratzim. Harebechdei Sha'er, Yom Shechlamato Ba'atfilm, for the godliness, which we're now saying is not Mamala Kalam, but Atzmah's Mamish, to be brought down into Tfilin, it's Mitzah the Bechina Shalamai Loma Erim Shah, to be hard in light, which is brought down. And therefore, you have to say that when he's doing a mitzvah, there's a third madreg. Madreg number one, Yimam Shach Eden to Kalim of a Malak Alamim. Madreg number two, Yimam Shach Atzmus, which is called Baal Aratzim, which is higher than us, and if you're from the Samachvah, but become a Makemis, that there's Nasa and Nishma, that Nasa is Ratz and Echad. And Nishma is Yitafrej Yud Gimel and Tainis. Yitafrej Nishma is Kabbalah Sel Mitzvah, Nasa is Kabbalah Sel Machal Shamayim. And it's called Ratzin and Baal Aratzin. The 613 retainers, there's one Baal Aratzin. And what he does, Mamshach Amitzvah, he's Mamshach, does a Mitzvah, he's Mamshach Atzmos, Makach Eishmech, Akeid Eishmei, which is the Madrega Baal Aratzin. But in order for that Madrega Baal Aratzin not, not only to come down, but to be revealed, you have to have something which is even higher than Baal Aratzin. And it becomes three Madregas. Madrega number one, Yamamshach Eid and Kaili. Number two, Yamamshach the Atzmos, which is called Baal Aratzin, into Seyder Eishtashas. And number three, this Madrega Baal Aratzin is Behez Galas, because you have a Kayak which is even higher than Baal Aratzin, which is affecting that it should be Behez Galas. In order for the light to be brought down into the film, it's even higher than the Madrego Balarot. This line I repeated twice. That's the joy that he has in Mimakadash Shem Shamayim. Jewish people do mitzvahs. And doing mitzvahs is called Kriyabesh Mekanas, called Nebishta by his name. In our days, I'm Sheikh Matzmus says Baruch. When we do this, we bring down from Atzmus to Moshe in Tzabarach. I'm Shalach as Kedusha as Atzmus by Hashem. We bring in the holiness of the Eibushter himself into His name. That means into Caleb, into His Tashus, into the Madrig of Elokus, which is called Chitzenius, and is only for the sake of Elamit. It is only that Nifta Bechal Atzmus. We are bringing Atzmus. That Hashem mitad Atz made the name of the Eibushter in as much as it's a name rather than a light is in Chitzenius, which shows us as a secondary thing which only exists because the Eibushter is contemplating creating a world. But by day, Shekhet and Bishmei, we call him his name, we're not only revealing the Aiden to the Kedem, but Mamshach Atzmus. Sh'oz hu nimshat nish nif nebuchal Atzmus, so Hashem turns with his essence to the Jewish people. And by day, Mamshich, we bring forward, Kedusha sa Atzmus, Bishmei, the holiness of Atzmus, of Hus Mamesh, into the Yebishna's name, which is the idea of Makat Sheshmech. So, I don't know if, we, if the splitting of hairs is correct or incorrect, but certainly what it says in this Maimon, means adding to this law not just a higher but the Kedusha Sa'atmos. And now that we explain Shmecha, and Makachi Shmecha, now we go back and explain V'yis Mechubacha. And again, I want to give a short introduction. You know, Hagotel Bamazla, Phil Sevetel Shabbehechel, you know, I've been teaching Chassidus my whole adult life. And there are certain maimorim that I've taught repeatedly. And obviously, if you teach the same maimet again and again and again, on some level, you know it better than another maimet. And one of the maimorim, which I've taught at least 10 times, probably 15 times, 
is the Maime Tanur Rabban and Ner Chanak Tafresh Mem Gimel. The first two prakim are very askaladik, they're about achtos. And the second two prakim, which are quite long, they're longer, are about the avoida of revealing atmos, right? which is in how can you be mamshach atmos to vahayu advarim? And the Rebbe Rashab says a fascinating thing. In Pei Gimel that Maime, when you do a mitzvah, you mamshach atmos. When you do a mitzvah and you mamshach atzmos, that gili is not going to be till Mashiach comes. Unless, along with doing the mitzvah, you have simcha shal mitzvah. Because the simcha shal mitzvah is the gili of atzmos. That's what it says in that maimir. So in that maimir, in Reish Mem Gimel, it says that when you're doing a mitzvah, you bring in an atzmos and hus. But the atzmos of the gashmi is not going to reveal till Mashiach comes. When you do the mitzvah, simcha shal mitzvah, the atzmos is in a state of gili. Our maimir is a similar thing. Makachishmechem, mecha means doing the mitzvahs, and Yismichu Bechazi from Gilui. But in this Maimon, the Rebbe is not going to say the same thing he's saying in that Maimon. Now, the reason I'm pointing it out is because this is a Hanukkah built in Muga, and it may actually be that this is what the Rebbe's Kavona is. So I'm pointing out that there's a difference between what's written in this Maimon and what's written in the other Maimon. And Bepashtas, it's saying two different things, although it's conceivable that the Rebbe actually means here the same thing he means there. And, and it would help to look at the Tafre Shlamet. <laughs> I have the Svarim here, just my books are stacked too deep, I'm a little bit lazy, but you have the Svarim the Kukht and Ninevenik. But the Vayis Mechu Vachal, Koy Yisom Akach Yishmech, here is a little bit different than the Simcha Shal Mitzvah and Eshmem Gimel, because over there the Simcha Shal Mitzvah is the Megal of the Yetzim. Over here the Simcha Shal Mitzvah is the giving Koyach to the Gavra. And the simcha that a yid has gives him koyach to reach deep inside of himself so that he can be makachi shmecha in doing the mitzvah. So in other words, in the Reish Mam Gimel, the simcha shal mitzvah is after the mitzvah, to be megal the mitzvah. And over here, the simcha shal mitzvah is before the mitzvah to motivate, the, to give us the koyach to be able to do the mitzvah. So the Rebbe continues on the very bottom, page 22, Vahini. HaKoyach sheyesh ben nisham Yisrael. Where the Yid has a koyach to make the Ebishah's name holy, it's Adai Simcha. And in this moment, the Simcha is first. First, it's in the state of Simcha. And the Simcha gives a Yid the koyach of Atmos and Hus, which comes from the fact that the Yid has Atmos in his Etzem, in his Neshama, like the Rebbe said on the top of page. It's on the next page, okay? We didn't learn it yet. On page 23. That the reason Yikim Mamesh Atmos is Moshrash and Atmos. But to reveal the Atmos and the Yid, you have to have Simcha. The Simcha reveals the Atmos and the Yid, which gives the Yid Koyach to reveal the Atmos and the Dvarim Gashmi. So the Rebbe says, Okay, Achesh ben Nisham is all the strength that Yid never lacked, the Shmei Yid's Barach to bring holy to the Abish's name, and the Simcha which is joy. Which is the Postak is saying, Yis, Bechol Koy Yisam Akach Yishmecho. The Jewish people rejoice in as much as the Bim Akadish Mishal Akadish Barach. And he translates as Zesh Yis, all the Makach Yishmecho, Yid is the ability to bring holy to the Abish's name, the Adev Yis Bechol to Simcha. First, you have to have simcha. Now, simcha is, uh, is, is a very deep thing. It's an Indian atzmi. But it's an Indian atzmi that's ruchniyistic. A mitzvah is an Indian atzmi, which is gash music, which is even deeper. But the hergish of the simcha brings you to a place where you can do the mitzvah, which is mamshech, the atzmos of gash music, which, I, which in this world is l'chayda beyond hergish. That's how you have to understand it, I think. And he explains, Ki simcha the joy breaches all barriers. If you look in footnote 35, you see that the mokin is from the Rebbe Rashab. Joy breaches the limitations, the criteria, the limitations and measures of Kol Seyder Eshtal Shalom, of Seyder Eshtal Shalom. Which is why, you first have joy. It sets up the ability to be Mamshach Atzmos. And he says, that the rejoicing that a Jew is doing is Bechah in you, and he translates Bechah Batzmuz Chaz Ebesh to himself. And he contrasts it. There's Yismechu Imcha, there's Yismechu Mimcha, and Imcha means that the joy is secondary to the Ebesh and Mimcha means the joy because it's coming from the Ebesh for Yismechu Bechah means we're rejoicing in the Eibishter himself. Look inside, behind him. She'ein zebechinus imcha. The joy is not with the Eibishter, which is like the Indian of Kimcha Mekir Chaim, which means that our joy is tafel bottle to the Eibishter. Shu tafel bottle, that I'm happy, I'm joyous, because I'm tafel bottle to the Eibishter. 
Or I bechinas mimcha that because the Eibush didn't exist, he gives me a joy like the pasuk says, "Kim mimcha akel, kim mimcha b'atam uzcha." A yid rejoices in the Eibush to himself. Period. The end. Full stop. Or kmevu or b'seif mamanam sham as the Rebbe Marash explains. Shem mimcha who may espashtus ha'atmos. If we would be besimcha from mimcha because the Eibush didn't exist, we're happy. Our joy would be associated with the gili of atmos. But when it says v'yismechu bicha, it's b'teich atmos chom huzcha. The joy of a yid is the Eibush that as he is by himself. So there's no more powerful illusion to rejoicing with the Abish than himself than Bacha. I wrote on the margin, what about Lacha? Like Lacha Shabbat Gedula Vagivura Vatafelis Lacha. And Lacha the Lacha is Simcha to Im Kimcha Mikir Chaim. Doesn't Kimcha Mikir Chaim, it means that the Mikir Chaim is tough on the bottle of the Abish, the Lacha Vayagdula means that the Sphere is a bottle to the Abish. But I don't know. Bottom line is, Yismichu Bacha means Bats Muscha, more than Kimcha and more than Mimcha. And now the Rebbe goes through the pilpul that I said before, Achadayin Tzadok Lahavin, the question is, the Zesh HaSimcha Mamshicha, it's true that when a person is rejoicing, it reveals his etzim, but it's only etzim shalom adam. Hasamech. It reveals the essence of the person who's happy. Vainashim Mamshicha, Sanyon, Mshneshto, Mshesh, Ramaka, whatever he does, his roots and his sources brought forward through Simcha. Kleiman, in other words, Shem Yesh Nam Dvarim Amenim, Uma Akvim, if a person finds himself in a situation that there's blockages and obstacles in his spiritual self, and because of this, which is the neshama not brought forward, joy helps. It breaches all of the fences. And Yid uses joy to access his own neshama. But the joy only reveals the halakus, which is in Yiddish and neshama. Not the Elokus of Atzmos and Hus. Um, the Benidim not in this case. Masha Idea Semchiz. So the Jewish people are joyous. We're saying Vismechu Bacha that the joy in the Yid himself, which is called Vismechu Bacha, I guess. Hey, Mamshicha Matzmos and Yisbarach. We're on the Eibush to himself. And the question is, a new movement. Eich Shayich. How is it possible? Because the Jew is happy, he should bring down the atmos of the Eibishter. What does the Yid's atmos have to do with the Eibishter's atmos? L'chayra Yid is a claim by Shefenish, a small creation. And of course, the answer is like we learned in the Rosh Hashanah, my morim, that first of all, Misha in the Bais, Misha in the Karka, and the Adam did it with touches atmos of Hussein. So, Baruch And second of all, Yisrael all about Machshav Yid the Moshe Shen atmos of Hus. The root of Yidn is Taki and Atzmus, and therefore the joy that the Jew finds within himself to reveal his own Etzem is enough to help reveal the Etzem of Elokus because the Etzem of Elokus and the Etzem of the Yid are ultimately one and the same thing. Which is Lamaila Misheresh Tehno Mitzvah, Sheresh Yitzhak Tehno Mitzvah, the famous Tanad Vela Yahu that the Yahu and Navi says, Me Kedem Lemi, Ay Merani, Machshatan Sheesal Kadm Lachaldov, and Afilam Machshav Esater. Narvaden v'yor dula mata they fell down below me. Giram fatol mat labir. I make it to a deep pit. But we know that you need to do it. This descent is the sake of an aliyah. There's two aspects of the aliyah. The first aspect aliyah, the aliyah in the person, and the second aspect of aliyah is aliyah in the world. The aliyah in the person is to go from the madrig of tara to the madrig of kedusha, from nisham shem satibi tehidi to atan kedush tiyun. And Ali in the word that gets explained in Tanya Pedaklam and Hayyan on as the infant did a Batakhtainim, be rude and did a Batakhtainim, and so on. Vidi, the Lutanah Haliya Hashaydeh, Hayyan, the Hayyan Misalam, the Nisham is uplifted by coming down into this world. The Bechin Al Yayna Yesa to an even higher level than the Nisham was. Kamesha Hayyan Lifne, Yuni Dasa, for they came into this world. Because even though Gam Lifne doesn't Bechin as a Yayna Maid, Kishal Allah Machshav. Before the comments were the Bechin of Machshav, and explained in the mind modern that Machshav means Al Yayna Shabba Machshav. Peter Shalom Machshav is Gilfim Bechin Sakhel Yayna, like it says, Barichis. In the Maimorim of after Shavuos, they said the first Maim and a half of Shavuos Samach Zayin is about Malachim. At some point in the second Maim, he finishes talking about Malachim. We don't speak about Neshamis Yisrael, and he's speaking about Neshamis come from Kelim of Atzilos, then they come from Atzilos Bechlau, then they come from Chachman, then they come from Keset, till they come from Lifni Atzimtum, and then every Madrega there the Machshav. But Bechlau is Madrega of Tahara, not Kedush, and they read the Tzerach Aliyas to the Madrega of Kedusha, like it says later on in the Hemshech of Samach Vov. Because Maka nevertheless, I day you need dust from the matter when they come down into this world. Masal al ma'ila yeni yez that you have been higher madreig, which is shemes alim l'shar shemarish. They elevate it till their first source, which is the Rosh Hashanah Musi is barach, which is even higher than the inner machshava. And what the Rebbe is trying to imply is that before the Yidden Tzedek Aliyah, we have no access to that shade of shabbat. 
we all have access to the Shedish Shemak, we use the Machshaw, which is the Kale. And the Veda of Tara, and through coming into this world, we reach the Medrag of the Shtab, and we go for the market, we want to go for the Abish, which is. Kedusha. Eidin Saf. The Kalem of Atils, Eidin Saf, which is even higher than the Kedusha of the Nisha. And the Rebbe finishes, Mekivan Shah Shedish the Yisrael, since the Shedish of Yitn is an Atmos. Lachaina the Asimcha Shalhem, their joy reveals their Atmos. And this Atmos that is revealed to their joy, Simcha Pedis Geder, Kola Gedarim, Babadidas Vagbadis Ishtashlos, and Mamshikha Matsusi is Barach Mamish in the physical performance of a mitzvah. The Yitz Kayach, the Mamshikh Atmos, gives himself as Moshe Shan Atmos. So the Yitzmichu Bachaz, the Avoid of Simcha, which is going to be revealing the Atmos of Makat Shemach. But I just want to repeat again. That when you speak about Yerid the Tzedek Aliyah, there's one idea of Yerid the Tzedek Aliyah as the Yerid the of the Neshama. There's the other idea, La Kel Behen, the Gashmiyas of the world. Did it betachtenim. And over here, the Vayitz Bechuvacha is Magal the Shedish of Yiddish and Neshama and the Simcha, and it causes Makat Sheshmech, or Magal the Atmos, which is in a mitzvah, which is Lachayr even higher. This is the end of the Shir. So we learned page. 20 except for three lines 21 22 and about two-thirds a little bit less than page 23 what's left for the next class page 18 and 19 complete the very top of page 20 and then the bottom of 23 and 24 in other words about half about half it's hard to say which half is bigger but it's almost exactly half on the first half of the Maimed the beginning of the Maimed the Rebbe is going to discuss the Sukkah Specifically, all mitzvahs. Now he's going to discuss the sukkah. How sukkah is mamshach atzmas? Is the rais and the psukim that there's makifim and there's pnimim and there's yechida and there's yachad? It gets very, very excited. The bottom line is, or exciting. The bottom line is, when you does a mitzvah, specifically sitting in the sukkah, he's mamshach atzmas the most saints of When again, it seems to me like the Rebbe is driving home the point. It seems there's a mechama and a sari liyayik and many yivasheya. And we need trufas, and we need segulas, and we need brachas, and we need hatzlachas. One of the biggest schoolers and hatzlachas and brachas and schoolers and refuas and yeshuas is that you should go into a sukkah and sit for five minutes and eat. As you'll see, the focus on the Avachilushti in this maimer, and then also in the next maimer, more oisfilich. And the next maimer, which is the third maimer about the war and the idea of mitzvahs, the Rebbe is going to compare the lulav to the sukkah. Not the sukkah to the lulav, but just like the sukkah is Mam Shechatzim, so is the lulav, who can fish is by the common mitzvah Hashem. Um, this is the end of this class, and we'll end of the next class. I'm hoping to record it tomorrow. Maybe I'll start tonight. Thanks to Shannon Ab, for those who do not know, we're going to start the sukkah Seyesh Shavasem, called Ezra Pachal Yesh Shavasukas. Thank you for listening to me, and thank you for giving me a reason to learn these my modem. So thank you for making my life a life which is full of Tayyid and Chassidus. A guten Mayat.